record. Okay, welcome, welcome. Okay, we have some people starting to flow in now. We're a minute late. Hey, Alan. Hey, Ken. How are you? Um, let's see who else is joining. Okay, we've got some other people joining. All right, let's get started. I don't want to waste any time. Thank you guys for joining. Hey, Ken, thanks. Good evening to you, too. Um, welcome. Welcome to my uh, first workshop guest series, guest speaker workshop series of 2022. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Renee Roberts, and I am a functional nutrition and vitality coach and founder of Nourish to Live Rx. And I help people sleep better and have more energy through the day and help you feel amazing. Uh, before I introduce my guest speaker for the evening, I just want to go over a few logistics for those of you that may be new to my sessions. Uh, feel free to type in the chat anytime during the session. I'm going to keep an eye on it while Caroline uh, has her talk. Um, you can also have any, if you have questions, you can type them in the Q&A box as well. And if you're watching live in my Facebook group, I will keep an eye on that as well. Feel free to comment in there and I will bring the questions into this uh, Zoom session as well. So welcome everyone. Now let's get over to our guest speaker, Caroline. Um, welcome. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of information about Caroline. Caroline is a personal and home energy clearing practitioner, certified mastery transformational coach, and an intuitive guide. She's devoted to making your life easier to navigate so you can be happy now. She gives you a fresh start by releasing any stress that's making life harder than it needs to be to make space for you to welcome more peace, joy, and confidence in your heart. So with her unique insights and intuitive guidance, you will finally stop second guessing yourself and get the answers you're seeking. Her compassionate approach and presence will always leave you feeling well taken care of and hopeful for your future. And Caroline's gonna talk a little bit tonight about how to release years of accumulated stress that you may have taken on throughout your life. So welcome Caroline, thank you for joining me this evening. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah. Uh, this talk, I call it, it's not your fault, because I love to bring this to more to the mainstream, um, what I'm going to be sharing today, and just giving people a different perspective of if there's something maybe holding them back or making life harder than it needs to be that they're not aware of. So this is for anyone who feels like they've tried everything and they just still feel stuck. Or, you know, oftentimes when we feel challenged, we're fighting with our partners or having financial issues or trying to break habits, you know, we can beat ourselves up looking, um, focusing outside ourselves and trying to find a solution out there. And we put all our energy into like fixing or figuring it out. And, but sometimes like, it's actually a simpler answer. So um, if you feel like you've done all you can and you're just exhausted, I'm offering kind of like a different perspective. So especially if you've been working on a pattern, um, you've been trying to break, or um, it's just something that just in your life that you're struggling with that seems to um, not go away. It's just like, I've done everything. Uh, Cause it might be something you've inherited or taken on from the people or places around you throughout your life. So again, just opening, um, your mind up a little bit. Um, so if you feel like, you know, nothing has worked, I just invite you to take a little bit of a leap of faith um, with me tonight. And let's see if there's something that's not yours keeping you from navigating your life so easily. Um, so before I just uh, dive in, well, let me go over what I'm going to be sharing. So I'm going to share about what's your energy field, personal energy field, why it's important to keep it in balance, um, what happens to it when you take on stress that isn't yours? Um, how to bring it back into balance um, by releasing what you shared earlier, that those years of accumulated stress, and then how not to throw it out of balance again um, with more stress. <laughs> you don't want that. So the whole thing is, you know, let's stop welcoming more stress and then welcome more of this peace, joy, and confidence, you know. 
Um, so before we get started, I just wanted um, to invite you guys to do one of two grounding exercises, if you're okay with it, just for a few seconds. Um, just because it's late in the day, we've been running around, I just want to make sure everyone's fully present. So all you need to do, there's two I'll give you. One is just take a, a couple of deep breaths and tap on your cheeks. This is an acupressure point. And as you take those deep breaths, what that will do is just make sure you're kind of fully present in your body and grounded. So if you feel like you're just been all over the place, this will just help you. Um, the other thing is you can draw, and you can do these anytime, whenever you're feeling kind of off, um, a figure eight over your eyes like this. And you can do that until you yawn or you kind of just feel a release. And doing that also will make you feel like if you're running around like crazy and you just need a moment to settle down, that will be helpful too. So feel free to play that around. one. That's a new one. Yeah, this one's great. I do it all the time. And I usually, you know, if I'm in stress, I usually <laughs> yawn pretty quickly. I'm like, okay, I needed that. Um, okay, great. So first I wanna start with talking about personal energy fields. And I'm not gonna to get too deep into this in science but um, I wanna emphasize some people feel that sometimes with, um, and I'll get into like the energy clearing stuff a little bit, that it's like woo woo or religious or spiritual. It really isn't. Like we are all electromagnetic beings. We all emit or broadcast energy fields. We all have our own energy field. Um, and like a radio, we kind of broadcast our energy field out to the world. And then even if you don't notice it, and then other people, you know, we receive their broadcasts too from other people. So if you've ever heard the word empaths, empaths are pretty much who I, I, I tend, people who tend to do energy work or energy stuff like this, we tend to be empaths because we're just more sensitive to the energy fields. We can feel other people's energy fields more than others. Um, so you might hear as just people being hypersensitive too. Um, so I like to explain this more, not in a sciencey way, but more just using an example. So like for me, um, when my girls go off to school in the morning, it is amazing the shift in energy I feel in my home. So maybe other moms can uh, relate to this, but like, you know, when they're around, I can feel their excitement. I can feel their stress sometimes, and I can feel everything that's going on. And then suddenly they leave, it's just me and the dog. And it's like literally it's just like the calm after the storm, right? Um, so that's an example of just interacting with people's energy fields. Or I like to tell the story, there's a, a friend that I hang out with that um, every time I hang out with her and I started catching on to this is when I'm done, like whether we're having lunch or dinner or whatever's going on, I come home and I start to later on the day stress about money. So this person tends to worry about money, not having enough and scarcity issues. And that's an example of like, when you're hanging out with someone, then suddenly you weren't stressing about something, worrying about something and you come home and I'll find myself later in that day, like wanting to work on my budget. And I'll be like, how are we gonna afford this and whatever. And I'll notice that that wasn't really happening earlier. So we can be really sensitive to the worries and the stresses of the people around us. Um, the mall during the holiday season is like a perfect example. Like you could be there for 10 minutes and just be exhausted because your system's having to deal with like all the stress of the people trying to get their presents and stuff done. And I always like to end with like the DMVs, like the epitome of like walking in. Like I'm not gonna touch too much on space clearing here or home energy clearing, but DMV also has that energy of the space where you walk in and it's like, you kind of want to walk out as soon as you walk in. <laughs> so that's just more like how I like to explain you know, energy fields and that the fact that we have them and that we're sensitive to them. So hopefully that resonates with some of you. Um, so now, okay, so we're sensitive beings. So what I'm gonna touch on now is about these stress knots I'm gonna keep referring to. So these interactions we have with people, sometimes they're good and they're great and sometimes they can be stressful and challenging. So when we have these stressful and challenging interactions, it can create what you can imagine like stress knots in our energy field, similar like if you have a knot in your body and you go get a massage. So when there are too many knots in our energy field, it throws this beautiful energy field that's supposed to keep us, you know, being able to flow with life, navigate easily, attract things, and just really feel like good and feel like ourselves. It kind of throws us 
out of balance. And so, and we could be accumulating these over time, you know, years, right? So, um, so it can be from a current experience, like the examples I gave you, these are things that could have happened like last week, but often um, they can build up from the past. And so it can be stuff from our childhood, our parents, our families. So like any of these interactions or traumatic or, or challenging experiences we have can create these stress knots that stay in our system or our field, I should call. And then they can even be inherited. Like if the pattern you're trying to break or the thing that keeps happening or you struggled with has been past generations, this is something like could have been in your mother's field, your father's field or generationally, and you can inherit kind of these stress knots. So, um, so, and then it's important to know, and I'll touch on this later on, that these are things I'm talking about that we've taken on from others, but we can also create our own knots. And I'll talk about that later when I go into how to keep, um, keep yourself from going out of balance again. Okay. So, you know, why is it important to release these knots, you know, and bring this balance back to this personal energy field? So again, I touched on a little bit. It really allows you to feel more like yourself. I mean, this is your field. This is who you are. This is how you're supposed to thrive. So you want it to be pure to you, right? And it does really help you navigate your life with more ease. So I want you to think of these stress knots as almost like roadblocks on your life path. Um, they send you off on detours and they kind of make the terrain a little rough. Um, so, you, you know, or they just keep you stuck. And so they kind of feel like, okay, I'm just cannot get around this thing um, versus being on a path. And I like to always emphasize this. The goal is not this perfect world where everything peaches and creams. Like we have these life challenges, we have twists and turns, but the idea is not to have these blocks. So we're going to have these twists and turns but are we able to navigate them without getting stuck? And so we wanna be able to keep moving forward. Um, I like to think about it too as, you know, if life challenges were like a huge wave and you're a surfer and you know the waves are gonna come, like, are you gonna be able to like ride out the wave? Now you go think of the knots also of like excess baggage. Imagine you had all, all this like baggage you had to hold while you're on the surfboard and this big challenge comes, it's like, it's gonna be hard to stay on the surfboard. So, you know, you kind of want to be able to be in balance, right? You want to be able to be light and like be able to like go up and down and experience what's going on and not be thrown off every time and have to get back on the board. Um, and, and just to give you an idea, like signs that you may be out of balance or that you um, have accumulated a lot of these stress knots is like, you know, you may feel like it's like hard for you to think clearly. Um, you just don't feel like yourself. Uh, you're easily influenced by others or what they say or what they do. Um, it's really hard for you to connect to your intuition and gut. Like that's a big one. Like if it's hard for you to sit and like um, meditate or even take a moment and just connect with like, what do I want or what, what does my intuition say? Um, and then in general, it just feels like what I talked about earlier. It just feels like things are harder than they need to. Um, and then you might be looking around like, why is it so hard? Like, I, like this person's thriving so easily, you know? Um, and another way to look at it is, um, is how it may show up in your life. Because when you're out of balance or you have a lot of these stress knots, usually a telltale sign, this is speaking a little bit more to um, when your home is out of balance. And I'm, I'm not gonna, if you wanna explore that, um, you can look at my website later, but um, clutter is a big one, especially physical clutter. If you have a lot of physical clutter in your home, I tell people get a home energy clearing first because often that will help start the process sooner than like trying to get rid of all your stuff. But mental clutter, so any type of clutter usually a sign, clutter loves stress. <laughs> Um, trouble sleeping or just relaxing, you know, not being able to sit still or be quiet for a few minutes. Um, financial struggles, like worrying about money, lack or feeling that there's a lack of opportunities. Uh, relationship challenges, you know, fighting with your partner or colleagues at work and, or just communication issues with your kids or people in your family. Um, and even health issues like fatigue, headaches, digestive issues, you know, it doesn't seem to, so I know I'm like going over like all these things. The thing is, 
with this stuff, it's very personal to you. So it's like what you've inherited and what you've taken on. So it's hard to, it's really depends on what you've experienced in your life. So it's really gonna be personal to you. Um, so ways to bring back balance and to start to release some of these stress knots. One of the most powerful ways is literally to walk in nature, walk in a forest, um, walk, the earth has its own energy field that's very healing. So it can actually start to release some of these stress knots. And so that's why they, you know, they tell people when they need to heal, whether they have an illness or something like that to go into nature because it does have its own healing property. So, you know, walking in nature, you may even want to bring a journal or book and like everything that is bothering you or you feeling stuck, you know, writing it all down and allowing it to come up so that the energy of, you know, wherever you are in that space can help, you know, start clearing and releasing some of these stress knots. Um, even standing barefoot on, on the earth, that can help too. Um, meditating, I'm gonna go into that a little bit more later, um, but more meditating in a way, I'm not saying like get to sit for an hour quiet, more focusing on when you meditate and you start to feel a feeling, like not to resist it, um, but just to almost to feel the feeling and not be scared of it and not to make a meaning about it. Oh, like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm feeling this, it's not right. I'm supposed to be just breathing, you know, don't get in your head, just feeling the feeling and letting it pass to train your system not to make, not to take it on um, and create like kind of more stressed because of the feeling you're feeling. So almost like practicing feeling feelings with the meditation that can help because it can start to release some of these stress knots. Um, and I'll talk more a little bit about that when I go into, you know, minimizing, you know, um, uh, creating more stress knots. And the last thing like I recommend is energy work. So whether it's what I do kind of my modality, which is energy clearing, but there's sound healing, Reiki, there's so many different modalities. I'm all about do what resonates for you, what feels good to you. All of those type of modalities tend to work with the personal energy field. So they're all about the bringing back the balance and releasing the knots and just keeping you, you know, allowing you to ultimately thrive. So whatever resonates with you, try it all. Um, my husband is an engineer by trade and um, he always tells people it doesn't hurt. So like, he's like, always go experience it. Like he's more of a logical mind, you know, see how you feel, just allow it to unfold and then, you know, just let it, you know, you don't have to figure it out and you don't have to understand it to, to enjoy the benefit. So that's what he always says. Um, so just to touch a little bit on the personal energy clearings modality that I do just really briefly, all it is like we're talking about the knots in your field. It's similar like when you go get a massage, we're just gonna massage the stress knots so that they release. So it's kind of like unkinking a garden hose. Like we're not taking on anything, moving anything. Like it's literally like if you unkink a, um, a garden hose, the kink is just gone. It's just it just releases and then the water's flowing now. So that's kind of like what we're doing, trying to clear all those stress knots out. And often clients will say afterwards, they'll feel you know, lighter, more at ease. Um, some of them, it just feels rejuvenated or they'll feel um, motivated again if they're feeling stuck or opportunities may just suddenly come their way. Um, sometimes it just feels like more confident um, or more inspired, but um, often they could actually be like tangible, results. So again, uh, we never know what happens as a result of personal clearing, but like it's always for your highest good. And it's always to bring back balance so you can attract more opportunities for yourself. So, um, but I did want to touch on um, not how we don't create more stress for ourselves, more from our own life challenges. So like a lot of what I was talking about is that, like stuff we could accumulated from things we've taken on from other people in our past. And that's stuff we can all work on trying to clear those stress knots. But we wanna minimize you know, the stuff we can control, right? So our own life challenges, when we have um, uh, stressful experiences, we can unconsciously also create these stress knots. And so um, when we're not able to just kind of allow, like I was talking about that surfboard, like we're not able to kind of navigate the challenge and we kind of like just go kind of, I'll go into a little bit more about 
experiencing a feeling, but like we're not able to just kind of allow the feeling, allow the experience go through it without kind of getting derailed. It can create these stress knots and then we can find ourselves attracting the same experience again. Um, so the best way to minimize um, these additional stress knots is to become this observer of your feelings. So I'll go into this, but I understand this is very challenging. So I invite you to be playful with what I'm going to share. Um, so don't, when we're done, it's like when you feel a feeling, don't be hard on yourself. Like, okay, I, I you know, I just play around with this because a lot of what I'm sharing here, just having the awareness of what I'm saying, you don't need to do anything, already starts to loosen the threads and loosen kind of the effect of feeling. So when you have a feeling, um, first question, you know, is this really mine? Like the thing when I have lunch with my friend and I get stressed and worried about money, like, is this really mine? You know, have I just taken on something? Just acknowledging that, you know what, I was just feeling great. And then I walked into the office. Now I feel like crap. Well, just having that acknowledgement already starts to kind of not create that knot. You know, you already recognize, okay, I'm taking something on. I'm not going to acknowledge it. And I might still feel it, but I know it's going to pass. It's just because I'm here right now. So again, not like identifying with it too much or making meaning about it. Um, so if it is yours, I would suggest welcoming the feeling what we, I say with curiosity and no judgment. So again, not attaching that meaning or identity to it and letting it just be information. So um, if it's anger, you know, instead of saying I am angry, that's like kind of like identity, like I am angry and it feels more permanent and it feels like this is not gonna go away. And it's really, you almost feel like I'm creating the knot, like this is it, it's here, it's more solid versus saying, okay, I'm feeling anger or this is anger um, and it's coming up and I am ex feeling and experiencing it, but looking at it as more of a observer and having that awareness that this is just an emotion I'm feeling right now and it could easily shift. It's just a different perspective that us as electromagnetic beings, the body responds to differently. It doesn't like kind of attach to it. Um, so, thinking of feelings as information. So sometimes we have pleasant or like information or experiences. So like sometimes we have pleasant experiences like we smell a red rose and it smells beautiful or um, a bite of your favorite food, you know, that's an experience I'm having. We can have not so pleasant experiences where like some people like, I don't like the taste of a sour lemon or the smell of paint drying or something. So these are just experiences. Now, I don't like the, the smell of paint drying, but I'm not gonna like make it mean anything about me. Like, I'm not gonna like take it and run away with it. Like, okay, this is a bad experience. What does this mean, you know? So if you look at feelings in that way, like, okay, this is just coming up for me. There's three choices we have when we have a feeling. We can get swept away, we can suppress it or let it go. Our goal is to let it go. Um, that doesn't mean you don't feel it, you can't experience it, it's fine. It's just as long as we don't get swept away and suppress it. So if a feeling is a balloon with a string on it, to get swept away, here comes the feeling, the feeling's rising up, here's the balloon. To get swept away means I'm, as I'm experiencing the feeling, I'm grabbing onto the string and I'm just taking off with the feeling and I'm going down the rabbit hole of like stories, like, you know, if it's a repetitiveness, like a fight I, you have with your partner or something and it's like, okay, he did this again, I'm angry. And then I start going down the rabbit hole. I'm totally getting swept away, floating off into the clouds and I'm lost. And now I'm having a hard time staying calm. I'm having a hard time coming back to earth. It's just totally lost, right? Uh, the other thing is suppressing it. So you know, hold, suppressing a feeling. So imagine holding down all these balloons, all these feelings, and we just keep piling on and holding them down. I mean, this is like kind of one of the main ways we can create a lot of stress knots. If you've ever heard of, there's a book called um, The Body Keeps Score, or if you've ever heard of um, um, The Biology of Beliefs, you know, a lot of this is about us just like the body holding on to the stuff, you know, so holding it down. So suppressing feelings and not, experiencing them, this can be really exhausting on our system. So the ideal is to let it go. So watching the balloon, experiencing, and don't grab onto the string, observe it, 
witness it without judgment and curiosity. You know, we're humans, we're gonna have feelings and not being afraid of it. Um, and just one exercise you can do if you want um, is you can put your hand on your heart as you're feeling the feeling and take a couple of deep breaths and just ask, you know, what is this anger wanting me know? Often a feeling just wants to be felt. I, I know it's that simple, but like it just wants to be acknowledged in a way. So like sometimes it's like, okay, what is this anger um, wanting me to know? Or there could be a positive intention for the um, the anger. So meaning like there's a reason I'm feeling angry. There's a reason I'm feeling worried that is trying to keep me safe. Like it's trying to make sure that I'm taken care of. So sometimes just coming from it from that angle won't create these stress knots and keep it stuck in your, in your energy field. Um, you can ask also like, you know, what is it wanting me to know, you know, this anger, you know, because sometimes it's a message. So what I do want to share before we wrap up um, is this poem that got sent to me recently from Nick Pelosi, who's the founder of Sacred Science. It's a roomy poem, and I thought it beautifully illustrates the idea of welcoming feelings um, with curiosity and it being more of a guide or maybe a lesson and just being more curious. Um, so it's called The Guest House, and it's a roomy poem if you want to Google it later. Um, it says, this being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows, who violently sweep your house, empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. You know, I think sometimes we're, you know, taught a lot of us growing up to not feel our feelings and be afraid of feelings. So this is just something I wanted to make sure to add because, you know, again, the new perspective I want to give you is that is something challenging in your life that you can't let go of because you've taken on things and you need to like kind of release this energy of other people. But, you know, we do also have um, control over not adding more stress to our system as well. So I just wanted to add that um, component. And just to touch briefly on home energy clearing that I do, or like the energy of our home. So homes also have kind of like an energy in them. And so like over time, we can imagine it's like dust, energetic dust that kind of builds up. So like I've cleared homes that are like from 1700 Scotland and they can be very tiny and they can take a long time because you're dealing with years of this energetic buildup. So you know, similarly, like if people have fought in the space or something's traumatics have in the space or um, or just some um, repetitive actions that have been stressful, like um, if there was a, a you know, couple that was in the bedroom that used to fight a lot, you move into this home and then suddenly you're fighting a lot. You're like, I don't know what's going on. So I always tell people before you move out of your new home or something like that, it's cheaper to have the home cleared than like to sell the home and but also recognizing our homes are these sanctuaries and they need to be supporting us. So like, if you're feeling out of balance, it could be your home as well. They are, we are very sensitive to the energies of our homes. So that's just some other perspective to have as well and that they can be cleared. And the three main things you clear with the home clearing is this emotional energy, which is very similar to what I just shared with you guys about our personal energy field. It's the energy of other people depositing that stuff. That, that stress and things like that. But also um, when you dig into the earth, you can kind of stress the energy of the earth and that can broadcast through your home. Um, and if it does, it can be really hard um, to get a good night's sleep or just stay focused. And it can just really feel you, and you won't notice it unless it's been cleared. So like I had one running through my office in my daughter's bed and I didn't realize it until um, it'd been cleared. And I just noticed that Sophia wasn't sleeping well, and she's always been my best sleeper. And I was avoiding my office. And it wasn't until later, and I realized 
they had demoed two homes and they had removed a tree. So right in this line. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So that's like a major one we clear with home energy clearings. And the last is any adverse effects of technology. So people who are empaths and more sensitive beings, they can also be more affected by the tech in our, in our spaces. So that's just something to touch on briefly. You can always just go to my website to, to learn more about that. So just to wrap up, I wanted to talk about, you know, it's important to find out what works best for you when you think about this releasing stress knots for yourself. I mean, feel free to journal on it, however, whatever resonated for you, um, what you think feels like it's in alignment with what you'd feel comfortable with or resonating. Cause I'm all about just find what works best for you. Um, but again, this is all about you being able to release this stuff so you can manifest and attract these things that you really want in your life and just kind of feel more confident and grounded and just, you feel more hopeful for the future. And again, like clearing these roadblocks just makes it so much easier to navigate life and kind of stay in that surfboard. Um, and really, I just hope, and I wish the best for you guys. I hope this inspired you in some way, or maybe gave you an, an aha, or just, you know, perk something and you're like, oh, this is a book I read. Maybe it talked about this stuff too. I'm going to dive a little bit more deeper into this. Cause I just want to really bring this more to the mainstream that it isn't like woo woo or spiritual, or you have to join a cult or anything. Cause some people are scared of this stuff. Um, but it really is just taking care of both of our bodies, how we get, you know, massages or acupuncture and like we take care of our physical bodies, that it's important to take care of, of our energetic bodies and that they can have an equal influence um, on our, you know, vitality in life. Um, so, I, and, and to start you guys off for the new year, I'm offering only for you guys a 50% off discount to a personal clearing or the first hour of a home energy clearing. The code is all caps, fresh start 22. Um, you just go to my website. If you click get started and book that and put the code in, it should work. Um, and then if you just have want to chat or have more questions about this stuff, you can go there to get started and you can click on um, uh, a schedule a chat with Caroline and you can chat and you can ask me all the questions you want. And I always want people to feel very confident in the decision they make and whether this is right for them. So I can answer any of your questions there as well, one-on-one. -on -one. So if you have a specific. Awesome. Well, I have a bunch of questions. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat or you can raise your hand as well if you want to come on and ask live um, or you can use the Q&A box. But in the meantime, I have some questions I've been collecting. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, but, no. um, you talked about, uh, um, I'm just going back to my notes. You talked about the three choices when you observe a feeling it's swept away or you can suppress it. You can sweep it away. You can suppress it, or you can let it go. When you sweep it away, is that the same thing as kind of, you, can you talk a little bit about stories? Um, yeah, is it the same thing as like building a story in your head? Like you just yeah. kind of go down that rabbit hole, but it's like, oh my God, this person did something and now they're going to do this, this, and this, and this, and they never did that. Or, you know, like you're just making this yeah. story up in your head. Is that the same thing as being? Yeah. Started? Yeah. So you're talked away. So it's the ego. Okay. So we are, our egos want to be right. It's like, that's the battle of like being human. It's like, we have our intuition and our soul that loves us. And we're, when, you know, when you're flowing and vibing the world, or like when I say you're in the flow, that's when you're really connected with your intuition and soul. Um, but when you're like in the mind, the ego, get scared um it's all about and it's i tell people it's not because you, you can't hate the mind or hate the ego it's there for a reason but it's also trying to keep you safe anything unfamiliar it doesn't want to experience so like even if there's old traumas and old stories it's stuff like the ego is familiar with so it's like okay we know this this has happened before okay we're gonna and we're meaning making machines from zero to five a lot of these beliefs this is more my transformational work i do we have these beliefs that get instilled in us from zero to five because we're meaning making machines. So like if mom did not respond to us when we were calling her and she was on the phone, suddenly we feel like we're not important at two years old. And then at 40, we're still dealing with that issue. We're like, I don't matter. I'm not important. I'm not enough. So 
that's kind of like the swept away. It's like feeding into the ego, the stories of like, yeah, I'm right. Like, yeah, I'm right. You know, like, and you feel good. I'm right. I'm just, I'm... so, and I always say have compassion there too. Cause it's like you, it makes you feel safe. It makes you feel good when you're right. But at the same time, it can keep you stuck. So there's a lot of work and it, that's more kind of my guidance session side or coaching, but people do where you're kind of loosening the threads on these, these beliefs we have. And you do these things called future pacing where we're trying to make it safe in our bodies in order to have that reality we want, that future we want and kind of like make the mind and ego feel good. So that's kind of like the swept away when that feeling triggers all that stuff. Okay. Okay. So then if you suppress these feelings, won't they eventually come up? Like, 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 like mad men, you know what I mean? So Won't it just they come, come up? Out? You're, yeah. Yeah. Like exploding. But a lot of times they come out, I see it more and you might see this in your work as physical illness, you know, like a lot of illness, you know, stress is the number one and the number one causes of a lot of illnesses. But like, if you do bi- read biology of beliefs and stuff like that, you know, a lot of it's safer to feel the feeling, but like everything we've suppressed, a lot of times it can come up um, as these like autoimmune illnesses and things like that. And so a lot, there's a lot of people that, you know, as soon as they heal um, the trauma or heal or even do clearing work or energy work, suddenly it's like the illness, start, you, their bodies start to heal themselves and they start to come back into balance. So yeah, so the suppressing, that's kind of like in the book I was saying, um, the body keeps score. It's like, you think it's very deep there and it's not affecting you, but it's, it is affecting you. <laughs> okay, cool. And you talked about home energy clearing and um, I've heard of smudging. Is that part of the clearing? I, I compare smudging to like feather dusting. So like- okay you know, if you're smudging, it, it, it can work. And I tell you know, that's, you know, but it, it's almost like a very light level compared to like the home energy clearing work I do. Um, it's kind of like a deep clean versus like, you know, okay. but I, but when it comes to energy clearing in general, like, or home energy clearing, a lot of people, like I'll have clients that say like, I already smudged, I did some crystals, like I did some stuff on my own and I'll clear their home and it'll take me like an hour or two. So I can see, like, I can see the effect of what they're doing. Um, But then I, there's homes like I've done where it's like, nothing's been done and it's going to take me four hours. So I always tell them, it's not the size, it's the quality of the energy. And it's, I I know right away when I get started, I can feel it that nothing's ever been done in this space. And I've done things also where it's not even the home. There was a client um, here locally that she built a brand new home on, on, on a property and as soon as she moved in, she had like two miscarriages. And when she never had issues of getting pregnant before, she lost her job. I mean, this is an extreme case, but this is a good sign that something's off. Um, like her husband was struggling. They had issues with their nannies. And like, she was like, she reached out to me, like, I built my dream home. And like, now I can't be happy here. And hers had to do more with the energy of the land beneath it. And a little bit of the energy of the people that built the home. So. Um, I always tell people like, if you move into a home and like things suddenly start to go awry, like that's a telltale. Okay, let's clear this home. But I have clients too that, you know, they just want a fresh start, you know, and they just want, they're taking on a new journey and they want to make sure their home is supporting them. And they're feeling like their kids and their family that lives there is just, you know, able to thrive the best they can, you know? Um, I, you can't promise this, but like I had someone else clear my home and, but like literally two or three weeks later, my husband got his dream job. And I was like, I can't believe it. It works. You know, like, I'm not saying that happens, but like, it's one of these things when you have those moments of like, oh my God, like, this is amazing. Like an opportunity just fell in your lap kind of randomly. And it's like, I can't believe it. Okay. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know what smudging is, and I should, shouldn't yeah. assume that everybody knows it's basically yeah. you take it. And I may not explain it very well, but you take a sage, a bunch of sage and light it. So the smudging is more your intention than the sage. So you don't even need the sage. You can have the crystals or whatever. Um, So it's more you going around saying whatever you're saying. That's clearing more than the sage itself, you know? Okay. 
Okay, that's good to know because uh, yeah, it's just one of those things I I never really played around with it, but I know people that do it, so I was just curious. What? So when I tell people about maintaining a home clearing, you know, a lot of them like I'm not. You don't need to sage. You don't need to do these things, but you know, treating your home. You know, I always say like the homes don't get like dirty again with, with that energetic dust. It's like now the people make the. You know, the so it's about. I teach them a little bit about the feeling thing, but we're humans too. I'm not like I don't want you to be growing around your home like oh my god I freaked out. You know, um, but it's all about more about the intentions and uh, kind of in training with the energy of the space. And but I, usually after home energy clearing, you start to feel like the home is this more the sanctuary space for yourself? So you already naturally are like, I feel taken care of. Okay, all right. Um, and do you actually have to be in the home to do it or can you do it remotely? Yeah, so I do most of mine, especially during COVID. I, did, I do most of my work remotely. Um, I do have now a few more, few clients like wanting to do in person this last year, which was exciting. Um, but yeah, I can just do the home clearing with a floor plan. Um, I just been trained again, I mentioned like some of us are empaths, we're able to just connect. So energy is not bounded by walls. You can imagine we have these energy fields and stuff. So some of us were trained and we're able to um, connect with the energy of a space somewhere else and then train with that energy and clear from a distance. Similarly okay. with a personal clearing, doing it over Zoom or something. Yeah, okay. Now you mentioned a little bit about those knots and um, those knots may have been there from ancestors. So are you crossing into it like timeline therapy as well? Um, I yeah, just so learned I, about timeline therapy. So I'm you know quite curious about that as well, which I know is of, all yeah. about ancestors and it's kind of like ancestral healing, what people do, you know, whether you do like past life regressions too and things like that. But like I had a client recently that she actually reached out because she was worried. Um, she had a lot of suicide in her generational family and a lot of it was due to financial stress. And she was like, I'm worried because I've done everything. I've done therapy. I've done everything. And like, I still have these thoughts. And she's like, but I feel like they're not mine. Like, I feel like I want to be happy here, but I just can't shake it. And it was, I think it was started with her great, great grandfather. Um, and so, yeah, the personal clearing helped because it was able, again, with each personal clearing, I don't focus on anything. We don't know what's going to come up to clear. It's kind of like peeling layers of an onion. So um, often one can be powerful enough, but it could take maybe like, you know, three or four. I usually offer um, like a package of four and People do them like either like one a week or it could be like one a month, whatever. I always tell them whatever feels because with each one, things are kind of like settling back into place and like you're attracting new things and things you, you kind of come almost feel like things are unfolding in new ways. And then you'll feel something else come up. So I have a client that I've been working with over a year and it's amazing the strides she needs, but she's like, you know what? I'm feeling this thing now coming up for me still. And I could tell from our last clearing, like finally the things she wanted to clear came up. But it's like sometimes part of this is like similar to acupuncture. You got to trust with acupuncture, you put the needles in and you're trusting the body to heal itself. Similarly here, we're, we're massaging and it knows how to heal itself. So like you got to try to trust the process. Okay. And how long is typically one session? One oh, personal first, clearing session. Personal clearing. Usually a first one could be like an hour just because I'm going to explain in the beginning, but then all the follow-ups could be like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And with existing clients, um, sometimes they just ask me to do one and I'll just do it on my own for them or they'll gift one for someone in their family and I just do it on my own for them. Um, okay. So you don't, uh, but I usually want at least do one with the client so they understand what's going on and what's, you know, how they may feel afterwards and go through all that. Um, and the home energy clearing lasts at least a year or more. And I, and I always ask clients, just check in. I have a client recently and she's like, someone's coming over. I'm worried, you know, it's going to go. And I was like, just email me when they're gone. I will check and make sure everything's good. <laughs> like, don't dress out. Oh, like a short visit. It shouldn't sh throw the whole home out of the balance. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, I think I went through all my questions. Does anybody have any questions that they want to type in the chat? Feel free. Um, I don't see any coming through on Facebook. Um, and if you have any, now's the time. And what I will do 
is if there are no questions, you guys that have come on before on these sessions, I do send a, the replay out and I send some information regarding the guest speaker. So I will send um, send you some information along with the replay with, you know, like the code we put in your website and uh, your information um, along with the replay tomorrow. So if you, let you, know, late, so you don't want to wait for that, my website is aligned by Caroline. Um, it's A-L-I-G-N-E-D-B-Y-C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E. -E, and you just use that code Fresh Start. Um, it's actually Fresh Start, not 2022. It's Fresh Start 22. Sorry. Oh, Fresh Start 22. Oh, yeah. Okay. So aligned by Caroline.com. Yeah. Fresh Start 22. Yeah. Fresh um, Start 22. Yes. Right? And if you go there exactly. and like I said, you click get started, you should see an option for personal energy clearings. Or if you just want to chat and ask more questions, just go to where it says like curious start here. Awesome. Okay. Well, I will put that information in the email as well tomorrow um, when I send it out with the replay once it's ready to go. Um, and if there are no questions, I will let you guys get back to your evening and appreciate uh you know, the attendees for coming on and taking their time and spending time with us tonight. And Caroline, thank you so much for joining us. I, uh, I appreciate this. This is so fascinating. This uh, energy work is just so, I'm learning so much about it. I've started learning in the past year all about it. I personally um, took hypnotherapy myself. So I can, um, so now I'm certified to do it. So that's where I've started meeting all these energy healers. I'm like, this is so cool. It's really neat. It's just something different. And like your husband said, it doesn't hurt to try it. If you've tried therapy, if you've tried everything else and you still are just in a funk, why not try it? You know, yeah. it can't hurt at I this know. point, right? Yeah. So yeah. thank you yeah, so much you. for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining. And I hope you found some info are able to take away some information and some good tips from tonight. So thanks everyone. Enjoy your evening and have the Great uh, week and hope to see you back in two weeks. Okay. Bye everyone.